Hi, Tom Walls Carbide Processors. Wanted to talk about custom carbide parts. 30 years doing a lot of projects, a lot of which involve custom carbide parts. Here you can see the gold braze. Above that is a really, really tiny, really, really thin piece of carbide uh, that's slightly warped. Um, here is, this is actually a spring winder for a mattress company in Mexico. Um, there's a special carbide, special shaped carbide insert in the middle. This was, this is a, a hay chopper. A uh, guy wanted to know about putting solid carbide parts on it. Uh, this is a hard facing alloy with, with grit in it. Uh, if, apparently, if you chop up hay and feed it to cows, you get more milk for the same amount of hay than if you feed unchopped hay. Uh, don't know anything about hay. We never got very far on this project, so maybe it didn't work. I don't know. Anyway, about buying custom carbide. When carbide's made, it's you take powder, you pour the powder down into a die, and you take a punch, and you ram it down tight. You, there's wax to hold the grains together. You melt the wax out. You have a real soft piece of material, softer than sidewalk chalk. You can carve that. You can drill it. It's real easy to work with, but it's very fragile. The final step is a sintering process. When you sinter tungsten carbide, it shrinks about 40%. Calculating the shrinkage is mostly science, but there's also a fair amount of art in it. You cannot say that this part will shrink 39.762%. There's too many variables. Atmospheric pressure is a variable, believe it or not. Oh well, yeah, you probably that probably makes sense to you. Um, the kind of powder, everything else, uh, humidity in the air, um, all makes a difference. So anyway, plus there there there's stresses from the pressing. And then you have, if you have a shape like the one I was working on today that's long and narrow, um, or any kind of a shape except a ball, then you're going to have stresses from the heating as well as stresses relieved from the pressing and the working. So you don't end up with an absolutely perfect part. Uh, a long, narrow part can twist, it can bow, um, it can warp. Uh, you get you get square flat square parts and they'll potato chip, uh, which actually looks like a potato chip sort of. You know, it it kind of bends different directions. But anyway, that's it. Um, I had a project, got a quote for a customer on some parts. One quote was four bucks. One quote uh, for the same part was a uh, four forty. The other one was two eighty seven. The quote I went with was the eight dollar quote. And the rest of the story, thanks Paul Harvey, is that the $8 quote was for 12 parts. What we did, what I did with, with, is bought 12 parts that we will have made and sent to the customer so the customer will have actual physical parts. And this is going to do a couple things for him. Uh, he's, he's working on a new shape, he is very successful with the tool he's making. It's a great tool. We're selling it on our website. Are going to shortly, but he will actually he will see how actual physical parts fit into his production line. There's also an awful lot of different specifications. Uh, if you look at the the sample drawing on my blog, you can see how complicated simple part drawings can get. He's going to know which parts are important and which parts aren't, and he can actually mark the part with a magic marker or fingernail polish. I use fingernail polish because it's bright red and because I have it because I put it on the front sights of guns. But anyway, um, so that's it. I am a huge believer in spending a little extra money, in this case a couple hundred bucks by the time we're through, to get a very small number of fairly expensive parts so that you actually feel them and smell them and taste them and wiggle them in and see how they fit here. You can play with them. Sometimes I think that if I was a lot smarter, I could do all this on a computer and have a drawing that would be ready to go. But I've just seen too many places 
big and small and, and multi-international and whatnot, where they value the same thing. There is just nothing like ordering a few test parts. They can be horribly expensive if you have to have them hand machined, if you have to have them ground after they're centered. Well, not much more expensive than ordinary production run parts, but they can be a huge saving. So that is it. That's a little bit about my belief in sample parts. Thank you.